This tutorial is for people who want to make a blog for their Unit 2 project. Um, you'll see that I'm going to be using a content management system called Wix here. Um, Wix is good because it's free. Um, they do have paid options, but I don't think that's something that we need to consider for this project for this course. Um, I think the free options and the prefab templates that they use are fine for our purposes here. They also provide a pretty robust set of options for branding and site identity and, and making your site your own. So um, you don't necessarily have to use Wix. Um, students in the past have used Weebly, WordPress, um, even Substack. Although I will say that Substack does not really offer a lot of robust branding opportunities. So you'd really have to put a lot of work into the entries themselves if you choose to use a platform like Substack. Um, I've also had students in the past code their sites from scratch and share their GitHub, which is really cool for you know seeing how the code interacts with the finished product. But I'm not requiring that. That's not something that you necessarily need to do. So. Um, here through Wix, I've logged in through my Google account, my Gmail account, and from there, uh, I'm going to click create a new site. And they're going to ask me what I'm trying to do. And here, we're working on Web 2.0, we're working on blogs, so that's what I'm going to select. Um, it's going to ask me to name my website. Obviously, this is where you want to start to think about branding and coming up with a unique identity for yourself and a name that represents that identity. But here I'm just gonna call mine test blog because it's just for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, they're gonna give you some different uh, uh, kind of options here. Um, you don't necessarily have to really go through all of this, but if you think that you might wanna, you know, include something like an Instagram feed, um, or uh, if you think that you might want to include a portfolio of your work. So for instance, if you do code uh, websites or you do design work, um, there's a number of different things that you can do. Uh, I'm not gonna select any of those right now. Um, from here, you can start to, to build your website. They say you can start with the template. You can do a custom built site. Again, templates are good enough for our purposes. Uh, I'm just going to go right to the dashboard, though, and start working on my site from the dashboard view. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to uh, choose a domain. And again, um, this is something where either you know you can choose to pay for a unique domain or you can just use whatever Wix site domain. Uh, Wix creates for you. So that means that, you know, your URL will have, you know, like Wix site in it, which is fine. Um, uh, for our purposes, again, we don't need to be fully professional with this. You don't have to pay for a domain. Um, it gives you some other options here. You can write your first post, you can design your site, or you can work on your um, SEO. Uh, which I don't think we should be spending a lot of time on. Um, let's start with designing the site. Uh, it says, you know, let Wix create a site for you. Let's not use that. Let's get to know how to use the interface, choose a template, and work off of that template in design. So this is a template that I've used a number of times for a number of different sites. It's very simple. It's very bare bones. It's very basic. Um, you can use it if you want. Um, it's also very customizable too, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to start with this one here. Um, from there, basically, if if you can use a text editor, then you can do any of the stuff that you need to do on the site from this point on. You don't necessarily need to know any HTML. You certainly don't need to know any CSS. Um, but if you uh, do uh, know how to do that stuff and you want to bring that into, you know, what you're working on, um, then you, you certainly are welcome to do that. Um, here <laughs> it's asking if we want AI to, uh, uh write some site text for us. We're not going to do that. Um, we'll talk about, you know, those AI tools at some point this semester. Um, 
I am of the mind that they're not as sophisticated as people like to, you know, pretend that they are. And I think your content will come out kind of weird and wonky if you do that. At the very least, if you decide to use it as something, you know, as a jumping off point and you do significant editing to what it creates, there might be something there. But I, I really would prefer that we stay away from that in this project for the time being. So this is your site editor. You can see that the it works basically by these like uh, kind of block structures and each sort of block of the site has different kinds of content. And this is a very standard sort of uh, straightforward setup for a blog. So here, you know, you've got like a subheader above your main header here. Um, you can edit the text there just by highlighting and typing something else in. Um, here you have your, this is where you would wanna have, I think the name of your blog. And the thing that, you know, is gonna display the blog identity to your audience. Now also in here, if you click this edit text thing here, um, you can change things like fonts, font weights. Um, if you want to use, you know, bold or italic or underlined text, if you want to change the orientation or alignment of the text, if you want to add text effects, you can do that as well. Uh, if you want to work with the, the uh, letting and kerning of your text, you can do that. Um, and you can work on SEO, but I don't think that that's necessarily, you know, um, something we need to be thinking about at this point. Um, let's make a good blog before we try to figure out how to get people looking at it. But it's a lot of different choices here. You can also use the template, you know, HTML choices, which, you know, are just given these different heading one, heading two kind of things um, or labels right there. Um, here you've got your, your menu. Menus are critically important. They're using a horizontal menu structure here, which I think is the way to go for a template like this. Um, to manage your menu here, you just click on that manage menu and then it's gonna give you um, each of your different menu items and then some different options for what you can do with those menu items. You can get rid of them, you can hide them, you can rename them, um, and you can uh, uh, maybe make some changes to the design of how the menu appears as well. Um, they have this social bar here for including your social links, a search bar so that people can search your blog. And then they've got this featured post area here, which I think is a good way to go about things, to have maybe one post that stands as, maybe it's your most recent, maybe it's your favorite, your best, uh, whatever it might be, but one that represents your blog right on the, the home page. Um, you can have a subscriber section if you want. You can just get rid of this section if you want using the editing tools over here. Um, again, here that has all the same options too, where you can work on, you know, fonts and how things, uh, appear and what they look like, um, by clicking these different setting options. Um, and again, if you want to add in a new section, something of your own, you can do this on any page of the website. So, um, they have some templates that you can use. Uh, I believe you also can just add, um, maybe like a blank sort of section that you can uh, uh, manipulate yourself. But if you wanted to add, for instance, it's not there yet, and about, you could add something like this to have a little short bio of yourself on your home page too. I think those are the things that you want folks to kind of get from this first page. You know, what's the identity of the blog? What's the visual identity of the blog? What's available to me in exploration? What's the content like? And then like, who's making um, uh, the blog. So here they have the about me in this divided column right here. Um, like we said in the design document, uh, usually these are three column layouts and then the columns themselves can be further divided up. And here they have a blog feed, which is also something that I think that you should have on your blog homepage. Um, here underneath the about me, there's a widget that uh, compiles, you know, this template person's uh, Instagram feed here. If you want to add something like that, you can. You're also encouraging people to subscribe. They have this pick of the month thing. So the idea might be, you know, you're doing a book blog and you have one recommendation every month or something like that. Um, then in the footer area, um, they've got the contact and the site identifying information. It's a pretty standard blog homepage and that's kind of what you're looking to do there. Um, here, if you want to add elements to 
any one of the individual sections of the page. You can add pictures, you can add buttons, um, you can add a strip. So for instance, if I don't really think um, I have enough spacing on my website and I just want to create a little bit of space, I could add this this strip here to create some visual difference between these two. I could also pop some content into that strip if I wanted to as well. If I wanted something that's, you know, maybe a little bit more fancy for this strip down here, I could choose one of those background images. I would be trying to think of things that are rhetorically connected to what I'm writing about. So if I'm writing about tech, then I would be uh, maybe searching through or, or seeking out specifically um, things here that are that are themed around technology. I don't see too many options for us in this pull down menu, but if we were to explore some more, then we definitely would be able to find stuff. Um, you have decorative elements, a lot of different things that you can use. You have different kind of boxes. You can include a photo gallery. Uh, you can put in secondary menus, you know, maybe you want to put a menu that's just for your, your blog entries or something like that. You know, you can do that. Um, you can use videos, you can have interactive bars, you can embed your own code too. So if you don't want to code the whole site, but you want to code like a widget or something like that. Um, they've also got these different kinds of uh, widgets so for instance, if you want to have some music on your site, you could use a SoundCloud player or a Spotify player. Um, so there's a lot of things here to look through, and I think those are things that you should you should definitely explore, but also pay close attention to these blog options here. This is how you get your blog to, to show up on other pages. Um, so yep, we talked about adding sections. You can do that as well. Um, you have your pages and menu. Uh, a menu right here. So if you want to add pages, if you want to get rid of pages, I think if your site has a homepage and about a blog and a contact, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, here we get into some site design stuff. So if you want to choose colors, you know, for instance, um, see my menu items now has that, that, that purple color to it. So there's an accent color. Um, you can also edit the colors, you can use hex codes, you can use RGB, whatever you want, you know. Um, but yeah, you can change the color theme. This is the current color theme. Let's say you prefer these colors, these colors, these colors. Um, if you want to match your own on Cooler and come up with your own colors, then you certainly can do that. Oh, it's not called Cooler anymore. It's called Adobe Color, my apologies. Um, you can also buy apps. I wouldn't not for our purposes here, um, but you might want to if you extend this project beyond the classroom. Um, you can add media. Um, and this is, all right, so if you wanted to use a uh, uh, Wix's kind of like uh, automated content management system, you could do that too. Um, keep in mind that you can uh, also look at the uh, mobile formatting of all the changes that you make. And you, you definitely should do that because a lot of people now interact with websites on mobile. And you can see that if you keep the mobile... Uh, formatted the same way that you have your web presentation formatted, it's not going to look right. So you can go back and forth between these two things. The changes that you make in mobile don't affect the changes that on the, the you know web version. Um, they're independent of one another. If you want to change other pages, you come up here to your page menu. You can go to your about page instead of your home page. Um, you can see they've got this bio here. They've got the contact page. That's a perfectly fine, basic, you know, um, uh, website about page or blog about page, I should say. If you want to look at the blog itself, this is the, the blog homepage. It's going to compile all of your uh, blog entries for you in this kind of uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know, I guess like a uh, like gallery format is what we would call this. And you can certainly customize that any way that you want. Um, but you also have to remember to look at um, your blog post page too. So your blog posts, this uh, uh, page right here controls how all of your different blog posts will display. So you don't have to design each one individually. Um, you've just got to design the one blog page and then all of your blog entries will be put into this template here. 
Um, so, I mean, that's just really basic stuff. And there's a lot that you can do with just that really kind of those basic tools right there in terms of customization. But all of this stuff too um, can be, can be you know, you can use drag and drop to, to resize things. Um, you can also do different things like, you know, uh, change the way that the content interacts with the, or, or, uh, the user once they've, you know, worked through it. Um, those are things that, you know, are, are, I think are kind of important, but are not necessarily things you have to pay a ton of attention to in this project here. We're looking for a blog that has a really catchy name. That's got a, a defined purpose that communicates your professional ethos and identity. And also that uh, uh, the visual aspect of the blog and the site kind of match um, that identity that you've created for it. Uh, once you've put together something that you think is pretty good, you can preview it. This will show you, you know, how things will look when you actually use the site. Um, and then if you're ready to, to kind of see what it looks like in production, um, you can publish it. And this is where you're going to get to choose your URL. And again, for the free one, um, you just want to choose, this is, you know, I teach you writing dot Wix site dot, you know, com probably, which is fine. That's perfectly okay for our purposes. You can publish the site and then you can see it um, up where it belongs. So the only other thing that I think you really need to know how to do from there is to create blog posts at that point. So um, if we wanted to start to create some blog posts here, the first thing that we've got to do um, is close out our site editor here. Um, but luckily, I've just got this tab open over here which is, you know, back to my dashboard and I can just run to now my blog. So your site and your blog to edit them, they're in two different places. So your blog is part of your site, um, but in order to edit your blog, you've got to come over to this blog menu here. Um, you've got some options here where, you know, you can see um, your post menu. Once you start to create posts, you can moderate your comments if you're getting comments. You can create uh, blog categories, and this is really important, and you should do this. Um, your blog shouldn't just have one category. They should have a number of categories. So, for instance, if you're making a blog post about, let's say, how to create a Discord bot, then probably uh, bots, uh, coding, um, Discord, um, you know, as many, a robust number of categories because that improves if you're starting to think about SEO, how search engines will identify your work. And, and the more kind of terms someone can use to search for your posts, um, the better. Um, same thing with tags. If you want to use a, uh, an internal taxonomy on your site, you can do that can have more than one person be a writer on your site too. I mean, for our purposes here, I think, you know, you want to make sure that your work fulfills the, the requirements of the assignment. But if you want to collaborate with others, that's cool with me too. So if we go back to this posts menu here, um, we can create a new post and, and here it really is just a text editor. So, you know, you add your title, and then you start writing some stuff here. I'm obviously not going to write anything real. Um, but here you can look at your blog post settings. You can have a featured image for your blog post. I, I think that you should use images as much as possible. Again, you can identify your categories here. You're free to create the categories and tags however you would like. I would encourage you to use those. Um, and then as you're writing the post... I wonder if this is, a lot of this stuff has changed since the last time that I've made a Wix site. So yeah, here we go. If you click in your ad menu here, image, gallery, video, GIF, file, um, you know, this is again, if you want to do some custom HTML code, if you want to incorporate widgets, you can. Again, we're thinking multimodal, multimodally in the creation of these blogs. So as many of those uh, uh, kind of uh, options as you can use, um, the better. There's also some kind of like, you know, traditional bloggy type things where um, you see in the menu up here, you have this quote thing. So when you, um, can I preview? Well, let's just publish it and look at it. Um, oh, I said blog posty, nice. Um, so 
I don't know why we can't. Oh, I have to publish my site still. So we're not going to do that right now, but you can pull quotes um, for your, your blog as well, which kind of is a good way to emphasize certain maybe like important bits of information or things that you want to stand out uh, when people read your blog. Here, you can use code and HTML as well if that's the way that you like to create. They'll let you do that. Um, but again, I think maybe the main things that we're looking for here is that we're working with, you know, like our text wrapping and, and orientation when we're using things like images that we're using our, our fonts that we've chosen for our blog specifically to communicate our brand identity. Um, and then two that, you know, the writing is like what blog post writing is like. So blogs generally aren't super long and usually they're not, uh, uh, like, essays in that essays have long developed paragraphs usually blogs have short chunky paragraphs you know you want to be varying your sentence length and if your your paragraph has a couple of developed sentences and a couple of short sentences somewhere between three and five total that's probably good for a paragraph and a blog entry because people generally are trying to consume this content maybe more more quickly and with less of a, a level of um, maybe attention to detail that they might be in a traditional essay type text. So keep that in mind. Keep in mind that you can use hypertext to link to other websites, other blogs, that that's a big part of blogging. Um, is making sure that you're creating some kind of a sense of community as well. So, I mean, that's basically it. Um, it's not really tough to put together one of these sites. I think the hardest thing is kind of settling on a design that you feel good about. So you might want to take a good amount of time early in the unit to kind of play around with those options and tools and figure out what really works for the blog that you're trying to create. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to pop them on the Discord. But uh, yeah, that's all for this tutorial.